Welcome to my channel. My name is Josh Christian, and today I want to talk about why I believe the world has a math problem. Let's get started. So the first thing that I want to recognize is that the world today has a problem with declining math performance rates. Now this isn't just apparent in America, although I think America is probably outpacing most other countries when it comes to our math performance drop-off, but most countries, including China and Japan, actually have declining math competency rates. Now most people blame movies, TV, games, uh, junk food, I've heard people blaming TikTok now for these short attention spans. I've heard everything, including even moral decay. And I'm sure there's a lot of truth to all those things. I have no doubt in my mind that kids just browsing TikTok for quick 30 second videos constantly is gonna make their attention span short because we're getting used to consuming media that's designed to summarize everything immediately. And in a world where kids get that instant gratification constantly, they're gonna expect that of everything, including their learning at school. So I'm sure that all of that is true, and I'm not here to debate that today. But rather, ultimately, my goal here in making this video is to offer an alternative learning solution for today's youth in a way that bridges the gap between their shortening attention span and what we actually want to teach them, which traditionally has taken literally thousands of hours to get kids competent at math. The educational system really at its core is designed to be slow. It's not designed to teach kids things quickly and efficiently. It's designed to keep them in school for eight hours a day so that their parents can go off and work full-time jobs. And when you give infinite funding to what is basically a big daycare, of course they're gonna find ways to fill that time. And I'm not saying school is useless. I'm not anti-school. I see the purpose of it. Absolutely, I'm not here to fight everybody that's pro-public school at all, um, but I do think that we're teaching kids in a way that's inefficient. And when you teach, especially math, inefficiently over such an extended period of time, you lose that foundational understanding that's required to get to the next stage or step. So by the time kids get to algebra, they've already forgotten the rules of PEMDAS. And I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but my point here is that when you learn things over a shorter period of time, all of that relevant information, those building blocks, stay with you. Now this leads me into one of the problems that I've noticed, that at least I experienced through education. And based on what I've seen online, I see people pretty much every single day that struggle with the same issues. And that is PEMDAS. PEMDAS doesn't exist. PEMDAS isn't good, it's not bad, it doesn't exist. It's literally just a mnemonic device or an acronym to help people remember the conventional order of operations and precedents. Now, it would be very easy for you to look at that and think, well, PEMDAS is an order of operations. In fact, when I went to school, I was taught that PEMDAS is the order of operations when it is in fact not. It's just something to help you remember the conventional order. Now I noticed some problems when I went to school because I didn't go to a super high-end private school. I just went to a really cheap, kind of janky, low-quality charter school and we didn't attract the best teachers. And it just so happens that my teacher didn't understand PEMDAS. And I have found just based on talking to people, based on the interviews that I've done, even with high-level mathematicians, that most regular everyday Americans really don't understand PEMDAS. If you were to go poll average Americans, I think you would be very shocked or surprised how few actually understand it. And the problem with this isn't inherently just how it's taught. Even if you are taught PEMDAS correctly, most people kind of forget the rules and all they remember is that PEMDAS is the order of operations. So if you're watching this video right now and you don't really know what PEMDAS is, I'm just gonna very quickly explain it. PEMDAS is an acronym for parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Now it may seem particularly obvious when you're teaching kids this system that that's the order that we do and perform math in. But of course there's some caveats and the caveats would be there's two groups of equal precedents within PEMDAS, which of course is multiplication and division and addition and subtraction. So the idea is that you always do parentheses first, then you always do exponents right after that. And then after that, you do multiplication or division, depending on what comes first left to right. And then you do addition or subtraction, again, depending on what comes first left to right. Now there can be exceptions to these rules and problems that these rules have caused that I'm gonna get into in a minute. Because PEMDAS is so easy to remember, 
but the rules are kind of taught to you when you're in maybe eighth or ninth grade, people forget the complications of that and all they remember is PEMDAS. And thus everybody ends up performing math wrong or in a completely different way. Now PEMDAS is not really particularly different from any of the systems taught around the world. And thus this is really a world problem, not just an American issue. I mean, here we, we call it PEMDAS. In France, it's taught as PEMDAS. In Germany, it's taught as this word, which I, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. We also have bod mass, bed mass, bid mass. All of those systems are basically the same with very few exceptions. They're all designed to help teach people the conventional order of operations. Now, where I went to school, I was just taught flat out wrong. I was taught that PEMDAS is the order of operations in all cases, and that's that. Multiplication always comes before division. Now, my math teacher wasn't a particularly good teacher, so I'm not surprised about that. But how many other bad teachers in America are teaching it wrong as well? Now, my wife, interestingly enough, was taught wrong as well, and she went to a much higher end private school. What she was taught is that multiplication or division could come first, and then addition or subtraction could come first, as long as you keep those precedents in their own group. And that is technically wrong too, although in her case, she was taught to leverage math in this really weird sort of overly complicated way that does end up working, but it's just a bad way to teach. And the inconsistency of how PEMDAS is taught is really a result in the system not being a good explanation for the conventional order of operations to begin with. We've all seen posts like this, or this, or this, or this, on social media where they ask a simple question where of course, you know, it's got an ambiguous answer and we end up with hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands of comments from all around the world of everybody disagreeing with each other on what the answer actually is. Now, for the most part, these are very simple equations. So why can't we get simple equations right? And the answer really lies in the problems of the conventional order of operations to begin with. Precedence is a good rule, but the system isn't consistent across the board. And if we look at computers and calculators, especially programming languages, we see an even more obvious problem surfacing. In fact, mathematicians have been trying to come up with a solution to a better convention for nearly 400 years. This is not a new problem. I'm not the first person to talk about this problem. And frankly, there is no good solution. Computers and calculators primarily don't use PEMDAS. And the problem with this is that many of these problems you see posted to social media, you can input into two different brands of calculators and get two completely different results. This is obviously an issue just in and of itself. Forget PEMDAS, we need to fix the order of operations and make it consistent across every different device that performs computation. The problem here is that we have a bunch of mathematicians who need to leverage these tools in different ways in different subsets and fields, and they all want their system of precedence to be the standardized system. And that's never gonna work. It's just never gonna happen because one system is good for one thing and one system is better for another. Most basic arithmetic is consistent across most programming languages, but there are exceptions. There are languages that calculate all arithmetic and all math left to right, no matter what, with no exceptions. Another example would be how Ruby uses its own system of precedence, which is different from C style or Python when it comes to handling bitwise operations. Now I'm gonna show you a quick problem that literally every mathematician has seen at least a hundred times before, and they're probably all annoyed with it by now. Um, but if you haven't seen this before, it's a really interesting case study of the problem with PEMDAS. As we can see here, eight divided by two, and then in parentheses, two plus two, clearly represents a problem with PEMDAS or the conventional order of operations. It's actually an issue with both. Even following PEMDAS's rules perfectly, the answer could be one, or 16, depending solely on how you interpret the meaning of distribution to parentheses. Many top level mathematicians still disagree on how this problem should be handled. And frankly, there really is no general consensus internationally yet. This problem, of course, is designed to take advantage of rules that aren't perfectly succinct and thought out. A true mathematician probably would never author it this way to begin with because they know that that would just lead to further confusion. Now, if we really wanna talk about a perfect system, Performing math from left to right in all cases with no exceptions really would be the most logical answer and solution to this problem. And that system would work for very simple arithmetic, but when we get into any type of higher math or more complicated problems, you need the ability to leverage math in ways where you can make problems much shorter and simpler and easier to read than just how computers calculate math. So while I would love a system that's completely consistent across the board, from programming languages to computers to calculators and to the way we hand write math on a whiteboard, I know that it's an unrealistic ask. So PEMDAS itself isn't perfect, but as long as we teach people to use it properly, we can get away with an imperfect system. 
In a way, this whole problem reminds me of English. You can go almost anywhere in the world and find English speakers who can understand you. And yet the rules of English very often contradict themselves and in many ways are completely broken. So English has its problems, but as long as we avoid those pitfalls, it works. We're able to communicate and use it effectively. I think that the conventional order of operations is realistically too ingrained in everyone's mind to be able to change it. So how do we teach it better? If we can't fix the PEMDAS issue, if we can't teach it in some global unitary way that makes perfect sense, what's the solution? Well, my belief is that the solution is to teach the controversy. If you teach kids in eighth or ninth grade PEMDAS, they will probably forget. But if you teach them why PEMDAS is imperfect, all the problems with it, all the problems with international math and why we don't have a consistent system, if we point out the controversy, I think kids are much more likely to remember it. So while no system is probably ever going to be developed that's perfect across the board for everyone's needs, at the very least we can address the everyday person and help them learn math in a better way that they can remember so when they get on social media and answer these posts they don't look stupid. So thanks for bearing with me through this somewhat ridiculous topic and I hope you enjoyed it or got something out of it. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below for more content coming soon. See you on the next one.